Hey everybody, this is Brian Modansky of the Modansky Homes team at Keller Williams Realty, Charleston, Mount Pleasant. And today, I want to talk to you a little bit about HOAs and the pros and cons of living in a neighborhood with them. So, HOA stands for Homeowners Association. Sometimes they're also called Property Owner Association, POA. And uh, basically what the HOAs are tasked at doing are maintaining the feel and the look of a neighborhood. And Typically, what that it does in turn is also keep the home value higher. So they do this through the use of covenants and restrictions and the fees that they charge through to the homeowners that live within the neighborhood or the subsection of the neighborhood. Um, you, some, some neighborhoods, uh, some subdivisions actually do have two HOAs. Um, and the neighborhood I live in does have two HOAs. So the subdivision I live in has four subsections. So we have a master HOA, which gives rules for the entire neighborhood. And then we also have a secondary HOA that oversees the subsection I live in. So I actually pay assessments to two boards. Um, and so my board dues are annual, but you can have dues monthly, you can have dues quarterly, you can have dues annually. It really all depends on the service and the amenities and the items that the HOA are, are providing to the homeowners. Some HOAs will take care of maintenance or uh, termite uh, treatment. Sometimes they'll take care of the lawns or uh, pressure washing and depending on those types of items that are included for each homeowner on top of the amenities or the, the maintenance of the common areas that would dictate what the fees are. So now we've kind of gone over what HOAs and POAs are. We're going to go over some of the pros and cons. So typically um, pros, um, you know, when you deal with a, a, a subdivision or a neighborhood that has an HOA, um, they are a little bit more uniform um, in what the homes look like. Um, a lot of times things like the front color door, uh, garage door, the mailbox are dictated in what's written into the HOAs. A lot of times HOAs have the ability to dictate uh, what type of fence material you can use, um, whether or not it's vinyl, um, whether or not it's uh, you know cedar or wrought iron. Um, a lot of times they can also dictate the height and the style. So. Um, you want to reference those items before you have anything done to your property. Um, you want to make sure if there's an ARB, an architectural review board, that you go through the process of getting any of those items approved. And this also pertains to whether or not uh, you want to widen a driveway, uh, whether or not you want to put a pool in or a sunroom or anything that affects the look and exterior of the property. Um, you want to review your covenants, and if you have an ARB board, you want to make sure you go through the proper channels to get approval first, because it could be a lot of money out of pocket, because they are, they will make you take down a fence that you didn't have approved. Um, so, you know, or they will take you to court over it. So, you know, that's definitely something you want to keep in mind. Now, some of the other pros that come with having an HOA is, um, like I mentioned, they like to keep the uniformity of the neighborhood. So they, they're not going to allow one neighbor, let's just have a neighbor that hasn't cut his week, his lawn in weeks. It's six to eight weeks. It's overgrown. You can't see anything in it. There's junk in it. Um, they're going to assess a fine more than likely. They'll typically send out a notification of a warning at first saying, you know, you have till this date to clear up this issue. Otherwise, you will be assessed a fine. And after a while, those fines really start to snowball. And they can fine for a lot of different things. They can fine for quite often for cars on the lawn, cars in the street, boats in the driveway, RVs, um, jet skis, garbage cans left out too long. Homes not being pressure washed and maintained, bushes not being maintained, the shrubbery. Um, they have a control of a lot of those items. So when, before you move into a neighborhood that does have an HOA, I do suggest making sure that your agent and you sit down and you review the covenants and restrictions. Now, um, you know, like I just mentioned, sometimes things like boats, RVs, and uh, additional cars or um, or uh, jet skis are not allowed um, in an HOA. Uh, neighborhood. So sometimes you need to find out those items beforehand because if you are parking them, you will get fined. So uh, 
some neighborhoods, newer ones actually have parking lots for those where you can buy like a slip. So you may want to look into neighborhoods that have that availability. Now, there's also another thing that does come up quite often. Um, uh, more and more neighborhoods are restricting commercial vehicles within the uh, within neighborhoods. And I'm not talking about just a pickup truck or a minivan. I'm talking about an actual work vehicle that has writing on the side of the vehicle. Maybe it's an electrician, a, a painter, or a landscaper. A lot of times people don't read the HOA restrictions before moving into a neighborhood. Uh, and they find out after they move there that they can't park their vehicle. Um, they have to either get magnets to cover the sides or they got to try to figure out how to get it into their garage. And I live in the South and a lot of people here use their garage almost like an additional room. Um, so, you know, they don't even have the storage or the ability to put their car in the garage. So uh, it does make things difficult if you don't research these items first. Um, you know, a lot of times um, when dealing with HOA, like I said, they do have the ability to control things like your mailbox color, um, what type of fencing you use. But, you know, they also do control items um, this way because it does over time keep the value of the property up. And in the end all, the end all, that's what HOAs want. They want to have strong values for their neighborhood. Um, that's why they're charging the fees to maintain the common areas, to maintain amenities. You know, some neighborhoods... Um, that uh, run by HOAs or managed by HOAs um, have things like golf courses, tennis courts. Um, sometimes they have uh, community pools or playgrounds or um, sometimes they have clubhouses or, you know, basically it varies from, from neighborhood to neighborhood and so do the fees. So um, typically that's those are the things that are maintained by an HOA and the reason why they are so strict uh, oftentimes is because they're trying to keep the neighborhood in better condition. Um, quite often you also find that neighborhoods that have HOAs are newer. Um, there are older neighborhoods that do have them, but typically one is uh, they cover less items. Um, you know, maybe they still have a community pool or they have tennis courts and common areas, but typically the older the HOA, usually the more lax, unless it's an extremely luxury neighborhood that's just been ma well maintained. Um, the older the neighborhood, the less likely it has uh, higher expenses when it comes to HOAs. Um, and they usually control less as they get older. So, um, so that's usually a pro when you find a neighborhood that is maintained or uh, managed by an HOA. Um, typically you are finding newer homes but you are also finding homes with a little less character because typically builders only nowadays have four or five or six models maximum within a neighborhood. So you sometimes do end up with the con of what a lot of people say, cookie cutter neighborhood. Um, you know, every home looks the same, um, you know, and if you're looking for something that's not cookie cutter, you're looking for something with more character, you're looking for something that doesn't have neighbors maybe right next to you, um, you're probably not going to be looking at homes that have an HOA. Um, now, in South Carolina, HOAs do also have some other um, abilities. So in South Carolina, let's just say you've fallen behind on your HOA dues and maybe you've been get, collecting fines um, and you haven't been taking care of the exterior of your property. After a while, they can they can go and file the Liz Pendants for a foreclosure hearing. Um, proceedings and foreclose on the property for back dues and back um, uh, back fees that haven't been maintained by the homeowner, which is a con, but it's also a, a pro. I mean, it's a con for the homeowner that's not maintaining things, but it's a pro for the neighbors that live around that, uh, you know, person that's not maintaining their property. So we've gone over a bunch of the pros and cons of what it is to live in a neighborhood with an HOA. I think there's more pros than cons, but it really all depends on what you're looking to get out of living in your neighborhood. Uh, you know, if you're looking for more independence, you're looking for uh, not having your neighbors right next to you, maybe a little bit more character. Um, you know, you don't want to have anyone telling you what you can or can't do with your property other than maybe the town or the county regulations, um, then living in an HOA is definitely not for you. So. Um, if you're not sure about some of the rules um, and you're looking in a neighborhood and you need someone to review the covenants and restrictions for you, um, if you want to start looking at homes that may be in an HOA um, and you need someone to guide you through covenants and restrictions because you may have something that you have to get figured out, please feel free to give me a call at 843-628-8910. I'd love to sit down. I'd love to talk with you and go over all the different neighborhoods in the area. 
Um, don't forget uh, to subscribe to my uh, channel in the link below. And uh, thank you everybody for sitting in and uh, have a great day.